What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing a little something different. I am going to be making a homemade drum pad and uh, fun fact, I've never done crafts before. Um, it's not something that I'm good at. You guys know this. Um, so let's get right into it. So here are all the things you're going to need in order to make your own drum pad. First, you're going to need a surface of which to strike. And for me, I have this beetle floppy pad that I got from Beetle Percussion. So make sure you check out beetlepercussion.com and you can get yourself your very own floppy pad. Next, I went to Lowe's and I found this 12 inch birch board. It seems like it's going to do the trick. Uh, I'm not trying to do anything fancy. So looks like it's gonna get the job done. Finally, some industrial glue and a, what's it called? Finally, you're gonna need some glue and a spatula. So I think we got everything we need. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you see me doing is cleaning off the board from any particles or debris, allowing things to stick better down the road. Next, you see me applying the Gorilla Glue onto the surface of the Beetle Percussion Pad. The Gorilla Glue was actually quite difficult to squeeze, so just make sure you're ready for that if you go down that route. You see me applying the glue nicely all around the pad, followed by spreading the glue evenly with the spatula. What you see me doing here now is just making sure I get every inch of the pad as possible so that every part of the pad sticks well onto the board. One thing that I did not take into account was some advice that I received from a few friends, which was to cover the entire surface of the pad and then wipe off any excess around the edges of the pad. I misinterpreted this and you'll see this in a minute where I just took the liberty to not apply glue onto the entire pad. So you'll see some edges of the pad where there is no glue and that was my mistake. This leads to that particular surface to not have as much rebound as the rest of the pad. So if and when you do this, cover the entire pad with glue all the way. And then make sure if there's any buildup towards the edge, about a quarter inch of the radius of the pad, just make sure you wipe that down a little bit so that when you stick it on there and add weight on top for it to cure, none of the excess glue squeezes out. One thing I will note and suggest is that pads like this, where it's just a board, some glue, and the surface, when you leave them in the car on a hot day, that glue will begin to melt and the surface will begin to detach from the board. If you've had pads in the past, and you've noticed that your surface is detaching from the board, this is probably one of the reasons why. So make sure if you get a pad like this or make a pad like this, do not leave them in a car on a hot day or else that's what's going to happen. Next, you will see me apply my state-of-the-art weight distribution system onto the pad, and we're going to let this cure for 24 hours and come back to see what we got. All right, it's been 24 hours since we've let this drum pad just sit there and cure. So now it's time to take off all this weight, my anchor <laughs> and two weights here and see what we got. <laughs> so here it is very simple very sleek i actually like the way it looks it's not too thick there uh, i actually like that it's fairly thin probably about an inch if not a little less than that and it's not heavy at all which is if you know me something that i really like in my pads um, so that the backpack does not weigh you down a few things that i did not do to this pad yet is i did not add any of the non-slip uh rubber bottoms that you would see in a regular pad sometimes it's a whole foamy surface or a couple of wooden pieces here. I didn't do that. I might do that later. I did not add a trim. As you can see here, you can still see the individual boards that were glued together when I bought it. You can buy a trim at the store to kind of make it look a little better. And then one thing I definitely did not do is treat the wood, which is something that you do to keep the wood from messing up should it get wet. So now it's time for the sound test.
cool. So that was the sound test. It actually sounds pretty cool. Um, not bad for my first pad, I would say. So check it out if you're gonna do something like this, which I recommend because it's a lot of fun. Nice little DIY project for those of you. Make sure the glue actually covers the entire surface of what it is that you're gonna stick to the board. Um, right now I'm noticing that a couple of spots I did not glue down fully and I don't have as much bounce there as I would where the glue is definitely glued better. But overall it's really nice. I like the way it's got a good sound. It's got a good volume. I think if I do this again, I'll just make sure that I spread it even more evenly across the entire surface of the pad so that it fully glues to the board. But I think it's a really fun project. I recommend you try it. If you can't afford a full pad, the floppy pad should be about $14 on Beetle Percussion plus shipping. The board from Lowe's was about $10. The glue was $5. And uh, that's all you really need. You can get a nice little pad there. That's all yours. You can even customize the back draw if you want. Make it all yours uh, for a lot less than some of the pads out there. So one more time, a special shout out to Beetle Percussion. Um, that's where I got the floppy pad from to be able to do this. Definitely check them out at beetlepercussion.com. Lots of good stuff there. I have a lot of their pads. They do this for a living. They do it a lot better than I do. So if you want a really, really good high quality pad, eco-friendly, check them out. Say hello to Lily. Actually say goodbye to Lily. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me on this one.